So Robert Grant, standing on top of the pyramids here at Teotihuacan on the Resonance Academy Television Gallery. How, how are you feeling? It's pretty, pretty incredible to be here. We're on top of the uh, Pyramid of the Moon, and uh, this pyramid represents the feminine, it represents the moon, it represents water, it represents the earth. And the pyramid just over my shoulder is the Pyramid of the Sun, and uh, we just spent the last two days kind of scouring through all of the, the places to see here at uh, Teotihuacan, and you know I'm very, very convinced that uh, you know, the knowledge that was that was here is uh, is incredible and incredibly advanced. And in fact, I did this full analysis on how all the pyramids here are pretty much equivalent in so many ways to the pyramids in the uh, Giza Plateau. Uh, even the alignment here, for one, is the same as the as the Orion's Belt, uh, but that alignment was only the same as this about 13,000 years ago, just as it has been uh, already stated by Robert Paval for, uh, for the Giza Plateau. So that's just one tiny nugget among so many, uh, mathematically, that actually show us and point to this ancient knowledge having Mathematics, do you think that they were relying on to build this? I think, they, I think they had an understanding of harmonics and the geometry that is so far advanced from where, you know, even what we probably understand today, candidly. Um, I'll give you just a few examples. The, the Pyramid of the Sun behind me um, is, is actually a, a height that relates back to the procession of equinox. So the procession of equinox is 25,920 years. Uh, the height of that. to the Giza Pyramid. And uh, the way that that is a phi relationship is you just take that 0. 0.4491 and multiply it by 360 degrees, and you end up at 162 degrees. 161.8 would be phi times, times 100. So when you think about the knowledge that went into all of this, and it could not just be coincidental that, that they had this understanding. It sounds like we've got some sort of fireworks going on behind me now, so obviously it's a really great auspicious day. But, um, you know, all of this also points in many ways to what we saw in, uh, when we were in, uh, in Egypt. You know, the whole point of the pyramid, which means fire in the middle, or Greek. When you understand what that actually and the symbolism about is about, going all the way back to ancient Hermeticism in particular, uh, it represents a merger of the masculine and the feminine. So as we stand here on top of the Pyramid of the Moon, um, you know, and look at our world, which is probably more polarized today than it's ever been before, uh, at least in my lifetime. And uh, it, it's very interesting and exciting for us to be here to be talking about how to find the balance that the world really needs right now between masculine and feminine energy and, and how they're so complementary and perfect and they can't be one without each other. What are you looking forward to on the rest of this trip? Gosh, you know, there's so many things we're going to be going to. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to going to Tulum um, and, uh, and, and to Cal, et cetera. And I think it's going to be a pretty incredible trip. And you know, obviously, you know, one of the things that's been enigmatic to, to historians about this particular plateau
of inches, right? Because people would ask, well, wait a minute, aren't inches just arbitrary? Isn't that some measurement system that somebody chose? And actually it's not. From the great work of Alan Green, uh, we know that the, the foot, the inch, the meter, um, as well as the sacred cubit, which is 1.718 feet, are all fundamental to the structure of the pyramid and what makes it uh, geometrically perfect in the way that it is. And we know that these, these fundamental units of measure, just as an example, if the 